The ACU men's basketball team has punched its ticket to Katy. I'm Max Preston. And I'm Grant Boone. We'll celebrate the Wildcats' first ever trip to the Southland Conference Tournament and look ahead to a pair of big games this week. This is the Joe Golding Show. Welcome to the Joe Golding Show from the JMC Network Studios at Abilene Christian University. I'm Grant Boone, alongside ACU Journalism Major Max Preston and the head coach of the ACU men's basketball team, Joe Golding. A bittersweet week for the Wildcats. In just their second year of eligibility, they have clinched a spot in the Southland Conference Tournament for the first time. But that excitement came on the heels of the announcement that Jelani Friday and B.J. Maxwell had been dismissed from the team by the university. This news is a blow to the program, has an obvious impact on the court but, Coach, how has your team dealt emotionally with the loss of a couple of guys who've been here for three and a half years? Uh, you know, uh, personally, Grant, I don't know. You'd have to ask them. You know, um, we uh, obviously uh, Thursday was a difficult day for those guys. Uh, that, you know, um, they, they've had relationships with those kids, and um, it was very emotional for all of us. Um, it was um, um, a tough day, you know, and so, uh, but you got to move on, you know, and you get, you got to turn the page and we have a saying, you've heard it, you've been around us a long time that, uh, um, you know, tough, tough people, uh, tough times pass, tough people last. And, um, you know, that's kind of the motto moving forward of finishing the fight and, and uh, you got to turn the page and move on. So this is the team uh, that we have now and uh, we still got really good players, got yeah. great, great guys. And uh, like you said, and you mentioned in the start of it, uh, we've, we've already clinched Katie uh, with four games still left to play. Uh, and last year, uh, I would have, uh, I don't know, You'd have been in that, the spot, you? you know. So, yeah. uh, you know, the great thing for me is that um, Jay Frank, uh, Jaron, and Farquhar, three seniors this year, are going to get the chance to participate uh, and have the opportunity to play for the NCAA tournament. Man. And I think that's any kid's dream that plays college basketball. And uh, we're going to give them that opportunity here in a couple weeks. And so for that, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, so you mentioned the tournament. The one big positive that came out of Saturday was you clinched a spot going to Katy for the first time ever. How does it feel to you to get that first ever spot in the Southland tournament? You know, I don't know if I feel anything right now, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm sure I will uh, once we get there and we, we uh, have the chance to compete for the NCAA tournament. Uh, I'm just happy for our guys, our players, you know. That's what it's all about them. Uh, it's, always, it's always been about our players and our program. And, um, you know, you, you want to give these guys the best student athlete experience that you can, Max, while they're on our campus. The best experience in men's basketball is the opportunity to play in a conference tournament for the NCAA berth. You know, that's, that's the greatest thing you can do in our sport. You know, the greatest thing you can do is compete for it, and the, and the best thing you can do is play for it, you know, playing it. So they're going to have that opportunity, man, and, and that's one – um, you know, check mark that we can check on the box. These guys have done a lot of things in their career here uh, in changing this program and to where the program was when they came in to where uh, this program is on their way out. Uh, but that's the one thing they haven't had the opportunity to do. And so I'm glad that each, each guy, uh, e each one of those three is going to have the opportunity. It, it, it has been a little strange because the season has been so great and your record has been so good all year. You've been in second place all year. And yeah. so clinching a spot in a way I'm not sure if we've celebrated it enough but yeah. because we've known we were going for so long. You know what I mean? That makes yeah, it a little strange. I think, one of the, I think this will be a year, Grant. It's just been crazy. It's just, it's, it's been, uh, these guys have just done, an, it's been an incredible journey with these guys, man. It's been so much fun. And so um, I, I think this is going to be one of those years where everything has just happened so fast and, and, and we're accomplishing so many things that haven't been done around here in a long time that I think when we look back at the end of the year, you're going to yes, take a deep I breath agree. and be like, wow, that was really cool. Or, wow, that was really neat. Or wow, <laughs> you know that. And I think this is right now, it's just all happening really fast. And it seems like each win we have or each day, we're accomplishing something new. And so that's exciting times for our program. Tied for second place, 21. One and six, ten and four in the conference. A huge week, almost two syllables. Ha, huh? huge <laughs> for ACU men's basketball this week as they try to play for a top two seed or maybe top four seed in Katy. We'll preview those games in a moment, but when we come back, a look back at Saturday's game against Southeastern Louisiana. This is the Joe Golding Show. Just one game for the ACU men's basketball team last week. You hosted Southeastern Louisiana Saturday, Coach, about 48 hours after learning you wouldn't have Jelani and B.J. The Lions escaped the Coliseum Saturday with a 75-66 victory. Beating Southeastern for a second time this season, I thought, was going to be a tall enough order, even if you had a full roster. I mean, that's, that's a really good team that's no, fighting I, for a, a top-two seed themselves. 
Yeah, no doubt. And when we beat them down there at the buzzer, basically, uh, you know, a month and a half ago, I remember walking out of the arena with you and saying, you know, that team's going to win a lot of games. There's no question. Um, you know, they had lost three in a row, but all by one possession games right there. And so just have a lot of respect for Coach Ladner. I think he does an extremely good job uh, with how well coached their team is. Uh, Ville is one of the best players in the league. And then the Greenwood kid, oh, wow. uh, he, he might be player of the year in our league, uh, the way he's playing the last couple of weeks here down the stretch and getting their point. team back in it. So, uh, you know, and, and he was just a man. Uh, on the floor the other night, there was we didn't really have enough answers. We obviously didn't have any answers for him. So, um, you know, we got beat up on the glass uh, a little bit, and so um, you know, I told our team after the game, uh, Grant, like it's like we th this was our first first game together. You know, it's like we're starting over. You know, and so every practice is important for our guys, and every game we play together is important. We're going to learn, and so uh, they'll watch every offensive rebound we gave up here in about an hour and a half, <laughs> and we'll hold them accountable for it, and then we'll go on the floor and try to fix that. Uh, and try to fix some things on this team playing together, make some adjustments, and then obviously hit the road and go to Corpus. And then after Corpus, we'll watch tape and maybe, you know, maybe we take care of the rebounding that game, but there's something else. And so, again, starting over and, and uh, trying to figure this group out. And, you know, ultimately here we have two weeks to figure it out and give this team we have right now the best chance uh, in Katie. And so I think that's, um, that's what we're working hard as a coaching staff is we want to give these guys the best, the best opportunity here in a couple weeks. Yeah, so, you know, at one point in that first half, you're down 19-9, to nine. But you come back, go on a 13 to two run, take the lead. This really showed some fight in your team. They're not going down easily. How was it for you to see that fighting attitude? In yeah, that it was similar a little bit to the same game. You know, it's like you know, you kind of uh, you know, you play so many games together, and all of a sudden you take a couple pieces out, and it's like it's like a puzzle. You know, the puzzle doesn't work the way you want it to work. And so uh, we knew that going in. We, I knew our guys were going to play hard. Effort has never been a problem for these guys. No. Uh, and uh, you know, they, they they were going to play hard. And we knew that. Uh, we, we, we knew that uh, we are going to have to be really good defensively against a really, really good offensive team. Yeah. And then we were going to have to find some different ways to maybe score the basketball and find, find some just, you know, we, we uh, you know, throughout the course of the game, it just seemed like we, nothing ever came easy for us offensively. We actually uh, played really well offensively. We moved the ball yeah. really well. We, take, we took care of the basketball. Yeah. Um, you know, we just could never really get going, you know. And I think Jaron and Rick stressed a little bit, you know, and that comes with yeah. – they don't have to do everything now, you know, but, you know, they're 19, 20, 21. They want to win. Uh, they know they got to pick it up a little bit. That's the obvious, you know, mm -hmm. and so sometimes you try too much and you press and it goes the opposite direction yeah. in you. Yes. So those two guys have been great for us all year, you know, oh, and yeah. so they're going to continue to be great players. Um, and um, obviously we need them to score the basketball, you know, mm -hmm. so we have to continue to be creative on ways that we, we do that. And then defensively, they got off to a really good start. You know, they, the first basket was a back screen that we'd worked on for three days, and that's not like us when we work on things, yeah. you know, uh, we don't get it. It's the first play we knew something was coming um and they got us on it and then the next possession they hit a three and it was like you know Whoa. and it just opened it up for a little bit for them and we couldn't get it going but obviously answer yeah. back tight game i yeah. thought them switching to the zone late really shortened the game we didn't have enough possessions they were wasting and you know, we we're wasting 20 20 we shot 55 percent against the zone but it took 20 seconds to get a shot yeah. and on the other end they're taking 20 seconds to get a shot and there right. we mm -hmm. couldn't ever get a rebound you know and so then Absolutely. some of those possessions turned into 50 second possessions right. uh yeah. because they would get an offensive rebound and run more clock so Second half, you know, it's 13 points at halftime. You made a run, as you almost always do in the few times you've actually trailed at halftime this year. You got it to seven and eight, I think on four occasions, maybe five, and you had the ball down seven or eight. A bucket makes it a two-possession game. I felt like you were maybe one bucket away from making yeah. this thing really tight. Is that off? Yeah, or? no, I, I agree with you. I think, uh, you know, our, we, we had a, our one rebound. One you know, rebound. On the other end of the floor, yeah. you know, it was just – uh, we just couldn't quite, we couldn't quite get it. I said after the game, you know, to, to, the, to, the, to you that, you know, it's just like the, something was, you know, it wasn't effort, it no. wasn't all that, but just like a little fight, you know, and it, it wasn't, I think, I think when I, when I, you know, got back away from it yesterday on Sunday and kind of relaxed, it's not, it wasn't just this or that, it just, it just looked like uh, we could never get over the hump, you know, like Maybe. you said, and, and uh, that was a desperate team. Yeah, we were right there, and they're, 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 they're uh, you know, this was a big game for a lot of different reasons, you know, I think they were supposed to drive down here, honestly, and they found out the news on Thursday, and they flew, uh, so that will, that would tell you how important that game is uh, for them, and it, it gives them the opportunity now to, to be in the, in the spot to play for the double buy, so, uh, you know, when you go back and watch the tape, we did some really good things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they hit some tough shots. They did. Uh, they they uh, Greenwood is just a man. He and is. Uh, Done that to a lot of teams. <laughs> done that to a lot of teams. And we obviously, uh, you know, we, we haven't had to trap the post all year. But we might have to start trapping the post a little bit now. And it's something that we, we'll, we'll work on. And, um, again, trying to figure it out with this with this unit that we have, this team moving forward. And so give them credit. Yeah. Uh, you know, they came in here and won, won a tough game. And, uh, you know, we got to turn a page. Yeah. yeah. So one of your seniors, Hayden Farquhar, he didn't get the start in this game, but he – 
played starter minutes with 27 in the game, and he led your team with 16 points. How special is it to see him come off the bench, play his season high in minutes, and, you know, just step up in a big way? Yeah, Farquhar's been great for us all year. I'm, I'm so happy for him. You know, I mean, he didn't have the best of junior years. No. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he's he's – I remember meeting with him this summer and said, we're going to finish this thing the right way, you know. And so, mm-hmm. but you're not just going to be a shooter, you know. Like everybody <laughs> thinks, you know. And so his whole his whole identity on our team was was making shots. And if he shot yeah. the ball great, uh, you know, he was in a good mood or played great. If he didn't shoot the ball well, he didn't play or he couldn't do other things. And so we really spent a lot of time in the summer saying, man, what are your strengths? Your motor, your toughness, your energy, your passion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's become a better passer. He's just played really, really well. He's played his best basketball of his career this year. I really uh, he deserves to start, but starting to me, he's never really been that big of a Never deal, has been you know? for you. I mean, I, I think yeah. down here the stretch, the next three or four games, we're probably going to start some crazy lineups, you know, <laughs> trying to figure yeah. some stuff out and mm-hmm. um, and, and see, see what kind of works with this, with this new group. And, um, you know, Farquhar's never had an ego. Um, he, yeah. he should start, you know, like he's going to play starter minutes, but he's been so good for us. Yeah. I've never, I've never, I've always heard that six man, you know, everybody has this six man philosophy mm-hmm. and all this. And I've never really coached a team that had that until this year, like Farquhar is that guy, yep. you know. I mean, yeah. we put him in the game, and he immediately changes the game. I'm watching mm-hmm. the Corpus game uh, this morning, and you go back to the second half. It's like the eight nine minute mark, and they had made that run, they made the run. and got back into it. We put Farquhar in, and boom, it's over. He gets two yeah. steals, two steals. gets yes. fouled, gets two free throws, gets an offensive rebound, and mm-hmm. um, so he just completely changes the game. He's changing it in more ways than just making shots. So. Uh, he's going to play. His minutes are going to get extended now. And yes. uh, as long as he continues to do what he's done all year, he doesn't have to do anything different, you know. Uh, he's got to create space off ball screens. He's got to continue to post hard. We need him to rebound a little better. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he played 27 minutes and have one rebound. But it's hard for him. He has to front the post because he's always undersized. Yeah. Uh, and so he's having to front because we're using his motor so it doesn't get in. So when the shot goes up, he's kind of getting in position. Out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so he's trying to do his best just to make sure that guy does it. Yeah. But uh, effort's never been a problem with Farquhar. He's going to play great down the stretch. Um, and I was excited for him the other night, but I wasn't surprised. Oh, yeah. It's all hands on deck from this point out, isn't it? I mean, really. Yeah, we played a walk-on. And it creates on. some yeah, opportunities, you know, We played too. a walk-on the other day. Uh, we talked this morning about getting Tobias, maybe uh, Tobias some minutes uh, down the stretch here um, uh, as, as we go. And, and uh, so it'll be interesting to see. You know, the, the one thing it's going to do, it's going to give some uh, young kids the opportunity to play. Um, we got to figure out Joe. we got to get Joe some more minutes. Yeah. You know? I thought Gaiman did, stuck his face in there a couple of times Gaiman on Saturday. He did. Gaiman didn't practice all week. He had the flu. Yeah. Um, and mm. so he really – uh, came to practice on Friday and was okay, and then played Saturday. Um, so yeah, you know, and we got a. Um, so it's an opportunity for those guys. They got to step up, and, and uh, they're 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 good players. They're they're fun to coach, yeah. um, and so we'll continue to continue to coach them hard. Uh, they're going to continue to play hard, and uh, we're going to go see how many we can win down the stretch here. Well, your team is tied for second, and this is a huge week coming up. You play at Corpus Christi, and you play at Central Arkansas. Still a chance for that double bye and the first two rounds of the conference tournament off. We'll preview those games when we come back. This is the Joe Golding Show. The ASU men's basketball team, 21-6 and six overall, tied for second place at 10-4 and four in the conference with two weeks and four games to go in the regular season, beginning Wednesday with a game at Corpus. You finally crested that wave in January when you beat the Islanders for the very first time. You'll face a desperate team down in the Gulf on Wednesday, though, Coach. <coughs> They're 6-8 and eight in the league, tied for seventh, playing for their tournament lives. You haven't lost back-to-back all year. You've only lost, of course, five times before Saturday, but you came back and got at least a win uh, after each of the previous losses. And three of those times were on the road, like you'll be on Wednesday. This is going to be another tough test, though. Yeah, I think, you've, I think you know, I'm think i selling a broken record when I say this will be the toughest test we have to do this. But I do, uh, you know, you look, they're tied with eight losses for the seventh, eighth spot. You have three teams behind them with nine losses. Um, so they're, they're obviously, uh, every game is really, really important for them. Um, and so I, I would expect we're going to get Corpus's best shot. They played really well against Lamar. Lamar just might be the, the best Ooh. team in the league right now, the way they're playing. You know, obviously beat Sam and have strung two or three in a row after that game, and so, um, which doesn't surprise me. No. I, I told you that in Beaumont how good I think they are. So, um, you know, Corpus has always been hard for us. You know, we just never have had much success against them. Haven't quite figured them out. In part because they've um, been really, really one, good. One, because they got really good <laughs> players. And uh, two, they're really well coached. Yeah. And we have a ton of respect for uh, their staff. They've got a very veteran staff, a staff that's been in Division One basketball for a long time. And um, they, they – they do a good job with those guys, and so they'll be ready to play. There's no question. We have a lot of work to do here on Monday and Tuesday to to get prepared for it, and uh, you know we got to continue to work hard uh, behind the scenes to give our guys the best chance uh, on Wednesday night.
Yeah, so you have Central Ar Arkansas Saturday at their place. Last time you blew them out at home. This time they sit just outside of a postseason spot and you're going to be playing in their arena as they have high motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, can you s expect to see a better Bears, time, uh, Bears team this time around? Here goes Max again. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Look don't ahead, take, Max. That's his new Chris name. Thompson used to say, don't take look, the cheese. Look ahead, don't Max. Don't take the cheese. Man, look ahead, Max. Uh, if I didn't like Max, I wouldn't answer the I question. Know. But I appreciate it. I, I want to say this to you, Max, too. I appreciate all the coverage you guys have done with the Optimus and, yeah. and with this show this year. I think you guys have been great. You've been fair. You've been really good. Even in the bad times, you guys have covered us. And so I think it's neat for you guys to also cover a, a year like this. You yeah, know? So just want sure. to tell you thanks, man. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I think um, – I think Central is really good. I think they can really score the basketball. I don't know what's going on. I know yeah. they've lost some games here uh, recently. Um, you know, that happened to us last year. You know, yes. we, I thought we were really good, and we just couldn't yeah. ever quite, you know, one possession game here, two possession game, and it seems like you're just losing. And then all of a sudden, you just next you know you've lost three or four in a row, and you go from fourth or fifth to ninth. You know, there are no terrible down. teams in this Right, league. and then the pressure, Absolutely. you know, you kind of feel the mountain of the pressure, and you just can't, you know. I know they're young. Yeah, they have they some freshmen young. and sophomores. Uh, the grind is probably sitting in a little bit uh, with them, but now you look at it in a three or four game tournament, and they, hey, you know, we got to get, we got to go three and one, or we got to go yeah. four and zero, oh, or we got to go two and two, and they look at it like the sense of urgency is much higher now because uh, the end is near. And sometimes mm -hmm. freshmen and sophomores, when they know the end is near, they tend to, uh, you know, kind of flip that switch back on and get going. So. Yeah. Uh, our freshmen are like that right now. It's hard. This is, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about that last week, a six-month season. It's just a grind. So uh, they play, if I'm not mistaken, Max, I think SFA Wednesday at home, which is a, a big game. And mm -hmm. uh, for both of those teams, yes. I, uh, I don't care who wins. I just hope they played like a triple overtime, <laughs> uh, maybe a quadruple overtime game. and yeah. out. But uh, I, I know this. I know Saturday will be tough for us regardless of, of the outcome on Wednesday. It's tough travel, tough place to play, good team, very good offensively. Uh, Russ does a great job, and they got really good players. The one yep. thing I will say is it's going to be fun. This will be the last time Jay Frank gets to go back home, great basically. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Little Rock is only a 30-minute drive. Uh, his family hasn't gotten to get up here a ton this year, so I'm sure uh, that thing is going to be, you know, very, very supportive Jay in there. You know, this is the last time uh, that he'll get to kind of play in front of those people and put on a college uniform. So it will be emotional for him, I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I look forward to, to that day with him because I know he's looking forward to it. He so, won his first time there as a freshman. Yeah, he did. And then we won last year. Last year. Um, Two and know, one there. They beat us here on, on, a, right. on a buzzer beater yeah. here. And so mm -hmm. uh, it'll be fun. You know, I enjoy seeing his family, his friends. I'm sure it's part of your high school team, coaches. This is the end for him. You know, this is his senior year. And so this is the last. We could never get, you know, we tried to get back and get a game. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we could never do it. But so the Central game's kind of always been the game. Um, and so I'm – I know he's excited. Uh, it, you know, yeah. trust the process. Next game, he better, he better, uh, he better. <laughs> he was pretty stay, good Saturday. Yeah, stay, stay locked in. But I, I know uh, when we get to Little Rock on Friday and we head over to Conway, uh, that game will mean something to him. By the yes. way, will there be somebody else from Parkview at that game on Saturday? By I hope so. You know, I hope. Big A, you know. Man. Arian yeah. Simmons, yeah, you're We're fired in. up, man. He's had a great year. Yeah. Um, he's, he's just been terrific. Uh, he's done a great job in the classroom, yeah. uh, working on his academics. Um, so we're really proud of him. And they made the playoffs. They played uh, They played tomorrow night, and then again they'll play on uh, Friday. Maybe I might have the chance we're up there, and it works out that I can go see him play. Arion yeah. Simmons, your signee for next year. He'll be here next year, but that's then. This is now and a huge week, big week for the Wildcat men's basketball team at Corpus on Wednesday, at Central Arkansas on Saturday. You can hear both games on 98.1 FM, the ticket for Max. And for the coach, I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching The Joe Golding Show. We'll see you right here next week.